Hey, I'm Rob from Producer Tech, and welcome to my Tractor Pro Basics course, in which I'll explain all of the key areas of the software to get you mixing in no time at all. Lessons include track browsing and importing, how the track deck and mixer sections work, using cue points and looping, as well as introducing some of the more advanced features like remix decks and stems. But let's start with an overview of the software and some setting up tips. The Tractor software can be used in a number of ways depending on the setup you want and has several different GUI modes to account for this. These can be selected using the menu in the top right of the software, as well as the magnifying glass button alongside, which instantly activates the browser display, so you've then got more real estate on the screen for looking for tracks to play. And the spacebar on your keyboard is a shortcut for this button. Tractor Pro has four decks, which can all be set to one of four modes, allowing for more creative sets that incorporate loops, hits, stems, or mic signals into your mixes. But for now, I'm going to open up the preferences, which you do by selecting that in the menu, or with the button on the control bar, or using the keyboard shortcut, in this case, command and comma. Then I'm choosing decks layout, which has all the display preferences for all four decks. And all I'm going to do now though, is uncheck show C and D. So we're just left with A and B, and can then focus on standard two deck mixing. The browser is the best place to locate tracks whilst using Tractor as it has good automatic categorization of tracks, as well as handy organizing and searching facilities. If you want to very quickly play a particular track though, then you can completely bypass the browser and just drag a track in from Finder or Windows, after which Tractor analyzes its tempo and loads it onto the deck of your choosing. Then you can hit the play button on that deck to start it playing. If you can't hear anything, it can mean one of several things. So let's step through a few of those. Firstly, the deck's volume may be turned down. To check that, we need to see the mixer, so let's switch to that view mode. Now in the centre, we have two faders that set the levels of decks A and B. We can see that the left one is up, so that's all good. Below that though, there's the crossfader, one of the most important DJ controls. This blends from one deck to the other, so the reason we're not hearing anything right now is that we're only listening to deck B, as it's on the right side. So if I slide the crossfader across, you'll hear deck A fade in. Now that the deck is at full level, you can see it showing up on the master meter at the top. If you still don't hear anything, then it may be because of your audio I.O. settings, meaning you might have the audio coming out of Tractor and going to the wrong place. Opening up the preferences again, at the top there's the audio setup page, which contains the audio device option, where you can select the relevant sound card or audio interface. If you don't have any audio devices or controllers connected, then you can just choose built in here to listen to the output with your computer's built in speakers or headphones port. Bear in mind though, that you'll need more than just a single stereo output to DJ properly, so you have a separate output for your headphones. Although using a splitter cable and setting the outputs to mono is another option, but we'll come on to that shortly. If you have a control surface connected, like one of NI's own, and it has audio outputs on it, then this will be automatically selected here and the audio will therefore be coming out of that controller's outputs. The output routing option then gives you more settings for the different audio outputs from the software, working in internal mixing mode. And there you can see we've got the master output of the software mixer going to the main outputs one and two. And the monitor output above, which is for queuing up tracks, is going to outputs three and four on the controller, which are the headphones port. We'll look at monitoring later on in the course though. For now, I'll just switch it back to built-in. The enlarged deck display has two waveforms on it, a zoomed in and zoomed out one. The zoomed out one shows the whole track and allows you to instantly jump to a certain part by clicking on it. So you can easily see where the breakdown is for example, and then jump to that bit. Or if you want to go back to the beginning of the track, you can hit the switch on the left or use the shortcut Option and T. Then the larger waveform display is where you can scrub back and forth to get the play position right and can zoom in on the waveform further if you need to. This allows you to see exactly where the beat divisions are, to make sure timing of cue points, or just the track itself, are correct, as we'll see later on. For now though, we'll just hit play, and then you can see some important information about the track at the top, which is the remaining time, and tempo in beats per minute. If I adjust the slider to the right of the waveform display, you can hear how the track slows down with upwards movements, and speeds up with downwards ones. And 
and double-clicking the slider resets the track to its original tempo. Now let's load a track onto deck B. First, I'll set the crossfader over to deck A's side, so we don't hear deck B, just because it's a good habit to get into. Then I'll find a track for deck B, this time by typing the artist into the browser's search field, and then dragging the track onto deck B. Next job is to make sure the track is the same speed, which we could do by listening to deck B in the headphones and adjusting its tempo slider. But as we can see the tempo of deck A on the display, we can just make the BPM of deck B match that without listening to the track. Or even quicker, just hit the sync button to match them. As we're in auto master clock mode, so the deck that's playing is the master. We also don't need to worry about the level of the track, as Tractor has automatic gain adjustment built in to account for any tracks that might be lower in level, say, like unmastered tracks, for example. So now we can just choose the point we want to start deck B playing from, which could just be the beginning of the track, or a point later on in the intro, like maybe 16 bars in. Then we're ready to mix it in. So we can now just wait for an appropriate time, like when the track on deck A is winding down, to drop it in. Normally, this would be done by hand whilst listening in the headphones, but to show you how easy the software makes it for you, I can just carry out the mix right here without listening. So I'll just wait for deck A to reach the end of a section, and then hit play on the downbeat at the start of the first bar of a new section. I don't need to be totally spot on here, as the software is in snap mode, thanks to the switch up here, so the beats will align correctly as long as I'm close to it. Then I can just slide the crossfader across when I want to blend the new track in. So you can see that Tractor makes it pretty easy to mix. Although relying too much on all the automatic features and not knowing the software well is definitely not advisable and will almost certainly lead to embarrassing situations. So that was just a quick overview then. And in the remaining lessons, we'll go through each section in more detail to ensure you have a good understanding of all of the main areas of the software. See you next time.